Hey everyone, this is Ben from Vols Water Nutrition, and today we have the first video, I guess official video, on the channel uh, about my journey from COVID to athlete again. Um, today what we're going to do is do some baseline measurements, and we have a special guest today, the lovely and amazing Stacy. She's going to help me do a lot of skin fold assessments today, because um, I can't possibly do it on myself. So sit back, relax, watch the video to see what my baseline measurements are for this athletic season. Let's go. Let's explain this video a little bit. It's a little bit unique and it's a little bit weird, but what we're doing today is a body composition analysis. We're gonna compare the ISAC level one skin fold assessment to a regular bioelectric impedance on a regular bathroom scale to tell me what my body composition is, body fat assessments, all that kind of stuff. Now, let me tell you, ISAC level one is what I use with my Olympic athletes. There are four different levels, ISAC level one, two, three, and four. Uh, one and two are typically what we use for the uh, professional athlete assessment side of things to look at body composition, fat, musculature, all those kind of things. Level three is more from an instructional educational standpoint to run a seminar yourself for ISAC as well as level four is more from a research standpoint. So what is ISAC? So ISAC level one is a certification that allows me to do body composition assessments on my Olympic athletes, elite athletes, and my, of course, clients. Uh, what it allows me to do is take standardized skinfold measures across the body, put it through a program, calculate it uh, to see what my skinfold and skin body uh, composition levels are in terms of body fat, all those different things, and we'll run through the results at the end of the video. Um, what we're also going to do is compare those results to a regular bathroom scale and what the bathroom scale says um, about my body fat composition. Now, keep in mind one thing. There are a couple of variables that you need to keep in mind right now. One, Stacy is not licensed or registered or trained in ISAC assessment, so these numbers and this data set is not going to be official. The reason why I'm doing this, we're in lockdown. I can't get anyone else to do it for me. so. This, lo and behold, this is what we're going to do. Um, so that is the one variable. Two, the second variable is um, it's the day after Super Bowl. And I didn't love watching Tom Brady win again. So um, we're going to have some very real life data, so to speak. Um, and I guess the last thing, I didn't take my weight normally the way I normally get people to take their weight. Uh, the best way to take your weight usually is in the morning uh, after you've peed before you've eaten. Now it's midday because the shooting time is better, the sunlight's better in the midday. So unfortunately I have eaten breakfast and I have had coffee so that's going to impact the final weight a little bit but generally speaking when we're looking at really 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 intense scientific measures we want to make sure that people uh, get the weight from when they woke up and after they peed before they've eaten um, because that's tr best true uh, representation of your body weight uh, from a standardization standpoint. So um, I'm going to run some clips of uh, Stacy running through the assessment and all that kind of stuff and go through some of the skinfold sites that uh, basically we did and what those are talking about. So let's go. All right. So what we're going to do right now is actually um, go on a scale a little bit. And this is going to be stupid because I hate scales. But here we go. kilos profile one that's me 185 35 years old let's see how how much I weigh so 1.5 and the body composition is 11.3 percent body fat all right Okay, so that is what the BIA has said, the body weight scale, the bathroom scale. Um, so let's see what the ISAC numbers go through. Okay, so let's go through the ISAC level one. What is it? What number measurements we're doing? For the ISAC level one, we are doing around eight 
skin fold measurements, um, four girth measurements, circumference measurements, and two small bone measurements, as long as well as height and weight. Now we've already gathered height, I, I haven't really shrunk really, uh, weight's still the same, so we're going to go over, I'm going to show the clip, but also go over a little bit of the um, exact names and what those skin fold sites are called. So we have the bicep skin fold right over there, and then we have the tricep skin fold right back there, followed by the iliac crest, the supraspinale, and the abdominals. Sorry for all the close close up shots of what you're experiencing. Then we have the medial calf right there, the thigh. Yep, that's right. Lots of bruises, uh, and of course the back. This is where it gets a little bit tricky, um, where we can see the tricep X as well as the back X here, the supraspinale. So you're going to see Stacy go through a couple of those measurements, what that's going to look like, uh, what the small bone measurements are going to look like, and we're going to run through the data sets and the results uh, together. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, so that is how an ISAC level one skin fold assessment is purposely done. Let's go into some of the reasons and rationale for why I decided to do this. So the first one is obviously I am running this as a science experiment. I want to see what my body is capable of doing after COVID. There's a lot of, a lot of baseline measurement tests that I need to run, including what my 5K time is, what my VO2 max is, strength tests and all that kind of stuff. But today's body composition assessment is very, very important because what it lets me know is where my body is currently at. Now, does it allow me to calculate things from a nutritional standpoint to feed my body better? Yes. Does it allow me to mark my measurements? Yes. Does it allow me to do all those different things? 100% yes, which is why we're doing it. And what I wanted to show you was the complexity of how professionals calculate body composition, body fat assessment, and how far off it is from a typical bathroom scale and what typical bathroom scales use and the technology they use to calculate your body fat assessment. So not to knock on bathroom scales because I think they can have a use or a place, but you can see the technical difficulties between ISAC and body composition uh, through a scale. Let's talk a little bit about the bathroom scale and why it can be an extremely, extremely misleading measurement. Okay. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about bathroom scales and how they calculate your body composition. So let's talk a little bit about bathroom scales and how they calculate your body composition, your fat mass and all that kind of stuff. Bathroom scales like the one I have here use a technology called BIA. It's called bioelectric impedance. What bioelectric impedance is, is it sends a current, an electrical current from one side of your body and through your body to the receiving point. So typically you see bathroom scales like this that have metal contacts where your feet are supposed to touch because one side is actually sending an electrical current through your entire body to the receiving side. One of the biggest issues with using a bathroom scale is that it heavily depends on your body composition and the type of body you have because as you can tell, running through electrical current from the lower part of your body doesn't reflect any part of your upper body. So that's a misrepresentation in terms of one. The second thing is, depending on uh, biological sex, it can really, really make a big, big impact. For women, 
there's a lot of variation in regards to how your body is going to be able to, or the scale is going to be able to measure your bioelectric impedance and the strength of the electrical current. Because the theory is that the more fat you have, the weaker the current is going to be, and the more muscle you have, the stronger it's going to be. Now, this is based on the fact that fat does not conduct electricity very, very well. It insulates it. And water conduct, uh, conducts electricity much better than fat. So that's the theoretical thing. The unfortunate thing is you can easily trick this scale based on hydration alone. If you don't believe me, step on the scale, get your body composition, drink two liters of water, five minutes step back on and watch your body composition drop. The reason why is because the more water and the hydration status of your body will determine and screw around with the actual measurement of the scale. That's not to say that the scale is completely inaccurate and should never be trusted, but there is a grain of salt that you have to look at when looking at what the scale tells you, as well as what it tells you in regards to your body composition. Now let's take a measurement, uh, or I guess, let's take a look at what the ISAC level one skin fold assessment did with Stacy and compare it to what the bathroom scale told me. All right, so we've done the data collection on the scale as well as the ISAC level one. So we're gonna put up the data for you right now uh, of what my measurement said. As you can see, triceps uh, sat at, now keep in mind, this is a baseline measurement. So this is where I'm sitting at today, the day after the Super Bowl. So what we're gonna do is look at the measurement. So my body mass index, uh, Obviously, uh, BMI is 21.8, that's looking great. Uh, so let's look at the actual measurements here. Tricep skin fold at six millimeters, subscapular skin fold at nine millimeters, bicep skin fold at three millimeters, iliac crest is at 12 millimeters, supraspinale is at eight millimeters, abdominal is at 12, front thigh is at 10, and medial calf is at six. Now in terms of the girths, we have arm girth relaxed at 32 centimeters, arm girth flexed and tensed at 34 centimeters. The waist is at 75. Glute, uh, that's my butt, is 91. And the calf girth is 36.5. With the humerus breadth, that is the bone breadth right here, at 6.2 centimeters. And the femur breadth, that's the bone breadth at my knees, at 9.2 centimeters. So this Breakdown also goes into, what I like, really like about this is it goes down into somatotype, which is of course the type of body you have. Uh, there's three different types of body. It should be noted that everyone is a mixture of all three. There's never anyone that's predominantly or only one thing. So there's endomorph. So if you think of an Olympic bodybuilder, a lot of lean muscle mass, but also a little bit of fat and adipose tissue on top of that, that's what an endomorph is. A mesomorph is a traditional bodybuilder, someone with a lot of muscle, very little fat, and puts on muscle very, very easily. Ectomorphs are basically people that, we describe them as hard gainers, uh, very, very lean, skinny people um, that have very little body fat. And depending on the type of sport that you have, certain body types are better than others. You can only imagine an ectomorph would be a very, very fantastic endurance athlete versus a mesomorph, not so much. But let's get into this. So my endomorph numbers are 2.1, mesomorph are 3.7, and of course ectomorph is 3.4. That doesn't really tell us anything right now except for this is where you are baseline data. Now I should say that you can manipulate these numbers. Um, you can push yourself into more mesomorph, for example, if you wanted to push a more bodybuilding training program, um, or you could push more ecto uh, endomorph if you're looking for strength and mass and all that kind of stuff. And of course ectomorph, you can push those programs a little little bit more um, and find training programs that are a little bit more suitable towards those kind of things. Now BMI, like I said, already is 21.8. That's not a big deal. Waist to hip ratio is really, really good at 0.82. Now waist to hip ratio is really important because what that does is it determines your cardiovascular risk. Uh, so heart disease, heart attacks, all that kind of stuff. You want a number that's under one. Uh, so sitting at 0.82, is fantastic. Um, the sum of all skin eight, all uh, six skin folds, which is really really weird, why they do six and then they do eight. Uh, sitting at the six skin folds is of course fifty one millimeters, and the sum of all eight is sixty six millimeters. Calculating to a total surface body fat percentage of seven point nine percent. Now, okay, so now let's talk about what the scale gave me. The scale told me that I was 11.3% body fat, 3.7 kilos of bone, 
67.4% water weight as well as 51.3% muscle. Now the numbers here aren't terribly different and I'll give you the reason why. This is very, very important. Now, one of the biggest things is remember bathroom scales only have the capacity to accurately measure your lower body fat. Now, of course, legs being uh, what they are uh, in terms of musculature, but we all know that body sh different body shapes carry fat differently. Some pear body shapes or apple body shapes or whatever, it doesn't give us a full representation because if you're apple body shape, it underrepresents the amount of fat that you have, knowing that the amount of fat that you have is primarily carried in the upper body versus pear shape. Um, where the majority of your fat hangs around the hips as well as the thighs, what ends up happening is the BIA, the bathroom scale, overestimates the amount of fat because it's going through the most, uh, it's going through where the, the fat sits in your body the most. So BIA assessment machines aren't the most accurate for the general population. Now you can see through my shirtless video and photo and all that kind of stuff that it's relatively accurate in this regard um, because what the ISAC level one does do is it assesses subcut subcutaneous body fat, not visceral body fat. And what's the difference? Subcutaneous body fat is what sits on top of the muscle between the skin. That's very, very important. That's surface level body fat. That's very, very different than what we call visceral fat. Visceral fat is what ha the fat that happens within the marbling of the, uh, the meat, for example. If you think of a cow and the marbling there, that's visceral fat, the fat that's in your organ tissues, as well supporting your, uh, uh, your, your gut, your organ system, and all that kind of stuff. That's visceral. The way subcutaneous and visceral fat needs to be treated from a... Uh, nutrition standpoint from a body composition standpoint is visceral fat is much 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 more dangerous to your uh, chronic health versus subcutaneous isn't it's not to say that both are good uh, but of course subcutaneous fat doesn't carry the same health risks as visceral fat now the reason why this is important to talk about is because this is one of the limitations with ISAC level one is that you can't use that assessment on um, BMIs that are above 30 um, and specifically more of the obese population because you can accurately do this in a bodybuilding population but you can't do it in an obese population the reason why is it has to do with how reliable your skin fold grabs are once your body composition is heavily uh, heavily into the adipose department tissue those levels of assessment is inappropriate to do and but re the reality is there's a better measurement for you at that point in time which includes something like the bod pod dexa or underwater weighing if you needed to know that data most of the time you don't what i will tell you about the bia because a lot of people come to me with the bia issues keeping in mind body shape distribution hydration levels and status throughout the day the best way in my opinion to get bia data that's representative is to get a number of days and average it out. So for example, what I do sometimes is I get the BIA assessment through the entire week for all seven days. And then I calculate and then I just basically find the average of that number. And that's the number I accept because what that does is it takes away variation from day to day uh, in regards to hydration, sleep status, whatever it is. And then it gives you an average number. Now that's not an accurate that's the most accurate you can get, but it's not the most accurate you can get in terms of body fat assessment because body composition data, there are gold standards of measurement. There goes bod pod or DEXA scan. And then we go underwater weighing, which is really not really done anymore. And then we have ISAC, and then we have stuff like BIA, which is where stuff like in-body, bioelectric impedance, scales, and all those kind of things fall into play. So the way you get your data for body composition is very, very important. So just hope, hopefully the today's video shows you a little bit about what I go through when I assess my Olympic clients and uh, Olympic athletes and how I guide their nutrition and their training um, in regards uh, to their what the body composition does because I do use this data to help coaches tell them what is happening with their training if their training is pushing their clients and their athletes in the right way or if it's pulling in the wrong way and what I can advise from a nutrition and training standpoint to balance out all those things in the body so it's a really really cool thing okay so today's video was all about 
baseline data for body composition. Uh, it's basically knowing where I'm at currently. We're not fully done yet because today was only about body fat assessment. It was about body fat, muscle, all that kind of stuff, where uh, my body is from the beginning standpoint. So what we want to know, the next video, what I want to know is what my baseline data is for, let's say, a 5K um, for you know stuff like that unfortunately there's not ability for me to bike right now to gather that uh, information or swim because of the lockdown in Ontario but hopefully we get that data soon but right now we can definitely gather uh, physical performance data based on just a few different measures so um, stay tuned for that video coming up next thank you for watching that's today's video I want to thank Stacy uh, the lovely Stacy for helping me out do the skin fold assessments um, because I can't find anyone else. She did a fantastic job. I mean, it's really, really technical, um, but we did the best we could. So thank you very much, Stacy, for helping out. And I'm pretty sure you're going to see her in future videos as well. Uh, but that's today's body composition assessment video. Thank you all for watching. Please like, subscribe, do the things that you like to do. Comment, ask questions, um, do your thing, man. Um, stick around, watch next week's episode when, or the next episode, I guess, when uh, you watch me struggle to see what my baseline physical data is. That's gonna be fun, right? Yeah, yeah I think that's so. That's gonna be fun. You're gonna just film me dying in the park. <laughs> yeah. All right. Lots of fun. Bye, everyone. Bye.